What's the first thing that comes into your mind when you think about the term muscle? For some, a particular sport or an athlete may pop up into mind. You'd be surprised to know that you have the same number of muscles as any athlete in any sport. However, the size and visibility of these muscles is a completely different story. The human body comprises of over 600 unique muscles whose main purpose is to produce force and motion. There are three different types of muscles, smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and skeletal muscle. Smooth muscle and cardiac muscle are under the involuntary control and assist in numerous vital bodily functions such as peristalsis, heartbeat, and breathing. Whereas the skeletal muscle are muscles that are attached to bones and are under your conscious control. In addition, skeletal muscles are what most people intuitively think of when they think about muscles. Skeletal muscles produce movements such as walking and running and also contribute to finer movements such as facial expressions. Anatomically, skeletal muscles originate from one bone and insert on another bone across a joint. As the muscle contracts, the bone, which contains the origin site of a muscle, remains fixed, while the bone, which contains the insertion site of a muscle, moves. The force of a muscle is directly dependent upon its cross-sectional area. Thus, a muscle of a smaller cross-sectional area provides less force than a muscle of a larger cross-sectional area. For example, the muscles in your thighs are much stronger than the muscles in your forearms. Muscles make up roughly 40% of your body weight and consume the majority of your body's energy. Thus, any disorder that affects the muscles has a huge impact on the person. There are numerous muscular disorders that reduce a person's muscle mass, which can be caused by either environmental or genetic influences. The two disorders we will focus on are muscular atrophy and muscular dystrophy. As the common saying goes, our body's skeletal muscles work on the simple principle of use it or you lose it. What this means is that any skeletal muscle in your body that is overused will increase in size, whereas other parts of the body that are underused will decrease in size. This is exactly what happens in the case of muscular atrophy. Muscle atrophy is a disorder where the muscle size has decreased due to a lack of physical activity. It occurs when a disease or an injury makes it difficult or impossible to move a body part. As a result, the muscles around this immobile area will decrease in size since they're not being used. Studies have shown that individuals lose roughly 1% of their overall muscle mass per day of bed rest. Typically, muscle atrophy can be reversed through proper diet, exercise, and physical therapy. Now let's move on to muscle dystrophy. Muscle dystrophy is a genetic condition that leads to the progressive weakening and loss of muscle. Hmm, you might be wondering, that sounds a lot like muscle atrophy. But here the key word is genetic. There are mutations that happen in certain genes that interfere with the production of proteins that are needed to form and maintain healthy muscle. These genetic mutations can be inherited from the parents or occur spontaneously in the growing embryo. There are numerous different types of muscular dystrophies, however the most common is known as Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, which has a prevalence of 1.5 per 10,000 males in Canada. Currently, there is no cure for muscular dystrophy, but pharmacological treatments are available to help manage its symptoms and slow the progression of the disease. In short, muscular dystrophies are caused by numerous factors and can significantly impact a person's quantity and quality of life. Thanks for watching our video and please subscribe to the Demystifying Medicine YouTube channel.